One of the really neat things with V3 is that doing edge-to-edge -edge designs and nesting edge-to-edge -edge designs has never been easier. Even if you have to advance the quilt and uh, to continue doing the rows down the quilt, still very easy because we can use our multi-point boundary function to pick up some of the features of the quilted row that we just did to then help us put in the next row of quilting. So let's do that right now. What we do is we go to pattern quilting because that's what we're going to be uh, quilting as a pattern and we choose our points on the quilt that we want to define as our boundary. So I'll do that right now. And you can do as many points as you like. It's easy to do four, you can do more. And I'm gonna come down to right about here to give me a little bit of room to do the next row. And I've selected my boundary. Now, the next thing you do is you press uh, done, which on the QBot, you can hit the right arrow or you can press done on the tablet. And that now is a good time to tell you about the buttons on the QBot. The buttons on the QBot, the green go button, uh, serves as the set point button or go. You can press that button. And the right arrow serves to say done uh, at this step of choosing the boundary points. So I've chosen my boundary and it, it looks a little wonky because basically I just have a blank piece of fabric here, so that, that's fine. I go to, uh, I'm going to do edge to edge borders and I've got a folder set up with tutorials with one design in it so it's very easy for me to find the design quickly. So I'm going to tap that and put it into the area. Now I need to modify this to make it fit this area. So what I like to do is go into modify and here's a neat little function uh, that you should know about is if you want to have it, you know, what I want to do is basically non-proportional scaling to fill the area. So what I do is I press that button off, which is the scaling button. It was green, now it's yellow, and it shows you that you can uh, pro proportionally scale the design um, in either direction by any amount. So you can do it two ways. You can do it with gesturing or you can just double tap the yellow field and it will auto automatically scale it to the height and the width of the chosen area. So if I am doing it with gesturing, I'm using my two fingers up and down right now on the tablet. So I'm going like this up and down and that's pinching it and extending it. And if I go side to side horizontally, that will stretch it out. And that can be a little bit tedious uh, actually, it's not too bad. I mean, it, it's, it goes pretty quickly. Tedious is a relative term. But if I wanted to do it really exactly and not even think about it, I would just double tap with my finger quickly the scale Y. And you know what? I'm going to expand it so you can see the change on the screen uh, very dramatically. So I'm just going to double tap that scale Y field. Right now it says 196%. I double tap it and it fits it to the height. And if I double tap the X, it fits it to the width. So just that easy, uh, it's just that easy to do. Now, I've chosen my boundary as an arbitrary thing, but here would be the point if you have chosen your boundary very specifically and very particularly, precisely, you want to make sure that nothing goes beyond the red line. So I see on my left hand side it goes out a little bit and I'm not really concerned about it whatsoever. Um, now, so I'm going to say done at this point. Now, because I know that I am going to do this uh, edge to edge, not just once, but I'm actually going to do it and nest it and keep going down the quilt, what I like to do and what you should do is save this pattern because you've made adjustments uh, to this design for your particular quilt top. And say you were in version 2, this is for version 2 users, if you were in version 2 you would have to remember exactly the same area or remember the area that you set and set that exact same area so that you could get the scaling close to being right. Well now we don't really have to worry about that, we just save this pattern and it's going to be its own entity then. So let's do that. I'm going to save this pattern and we'll call it uh, We'll just call it EE -E, e -E, uh, Tutorial. 
and say OK. So there it is saved and it has been brought into the, the files. Now we're going to pick that up a little bit later. But for now, let's move to the start point. We want to quilt this out and get the show on the road. So we're going to quilt this out and then we're going to nest another one using the overlay feature. And then we're going to advance the quilt and bring in that design we just saved. So I am at the beginning of my quilting here. I pull up my bobbin thread, move that out of the way, and then I press go. And I'll clip my threads here. Now for this example, I did have my tie-off stitches turned on. I have them at 0.15 inches, uh, just so that they could be a little bit more visible on camera. So we have the tie-off stitches and I'm going to let this quilt out. Just to give an example, as this is uh, to be a little bit productive while it's doing this kind of work, let me show you another feature. So if we look at the tablet screen, we can see the pause and percent done uh, regions that are shown. And it says we're about 25% done with the design. You can also see the blue uh, pill or the blue uh, crosshairs following along the pattern. That's the actual position of the carriage. It's the delayed just a little bit. So it reads the, the drive motors, then puts it to the display, and then there's always a, like a little tenth of a second lag between the actual position and, and so forth, but it gives you a good idea of where things are. Now I'm going to hit pause, and I'm, I'm bringing up this screen here, which says continue, percent restart, and in motor speed, and it shows you the motor speed. And then underneath that, we have a tortoise and a hare. If you notice that when you were quilting that the, it was going way too fast. Uh, you know, if you have designs that have real sharp corners in it and the carriage is whipping around and jiggling a little bit, immediately hit pause and then hit the tortoise a couple times. Take it down to maybe 90% or 85%. Or if it's similarly or, uh, in comparison, if you have a design that is a very smooth wave without any kind of changes, why not open it up and uh, be like on the Autobahn and let it go a little bit faster? Here you'd press the hair button and go up to maybe 120 to 140 percent. It's we chose 100 percent as the default uh, here because it's a, it was a good average, it's just a little bit quicker than what version two was, but not so quick that it would cause a, you know, big problems. So I'm going to uh, actually just move this up to 105% because there's some parts of this design where it goes around that I don't want to lose, uh, I don't want to have the carriage jiggling a lot. And I've got a heavy machine on here. So I just change that and then I say continue and we were off to the races again. I'm going to fast forward the tape here. I'll have the, the camera on the stitching and it's going to fast forward and then we'll come back at the end of stitching and I'll show you the overlay command. Okay, so we're just completed up that row. I'm going to trim my threads, bring my carriage back, and then we're going to do overlay and see what we can do here with V3. This will be really exciting for you. I give myself a little bit of thread slack here and then pull the carriage away, which extends that bobbin thread a little bit. And then I come back and pull up my, my bobbin thread again so that it trims it so I don't have a bobbin tail on the back of the quilt. And you can see that the tie-off stitch did a very nice job, tied off that uh, very nicely. Alright, so I'm just bringing the carriage back to get to the beginning. You don't necessarily have to do that, it just makes it easier when you do the overlay to get to the next start point. I'm going to choose overlay here. 
And one of the things that we've got is uh, two choices. Move to the start point. Say we wanted to do some decorative stuff. Maybe we're not doing a quilt, but we're doing some kind of project that we just want to um, do an overlay and maybe fine tune it off just a little bit. We can do that. Or we can use modify and check this out. So we press modify and nothing much changes, although we see the modify routine show up on the left hand side of the tablet. But if I just gesture and I can see, now I can see how using one finger I've moved that design down and created a nest. And in this design, I can go just vertically straight down because this is a, a nesting design that you don't have to offset a little bit on each side uh, to, to get it to line up. It's a straight nesting downward. Now, one of the things, notice in the yellow boxes there, I have a, an X and, and Y value, a delta X and a delta Y, and that's how much the pattern has shifted. So say you know Say you know the repeat, or the designer has told you that this repeats every five inches. Well, if so, you can just say, for instance, minus five inches, okay, and then put delta x at zero. Well, this pattern doesn't repeat at five inches, okay? So I'm going to just move it up to, see, to, to, an, to a location where I think looks nice to me, like it should be there. I think that looks good, but I'm just going to tap my X and make sure that it, it really is at zero, and it is. So there, um, I've moved it down a, a three and a half inches. Good enough, okay? So I say done, and then move to start. It processes the design, then moves to the new start point. pull up my bobbin thread, and press go. And you can press go either on the tablet or the Cubot. Here's another instance where uh, you can fine tune at the Cubot using the fine tune arrows like you always have done if you're a version 2 user. Or you can just press go to start the quilting process, which is what I'm going to do now. And again, it took the tie-off stitches, which are really nice. And then once the carriage was out of the way, I trimmed my threads and away it goes. And as you can see, as it's quilting out here through the needle cam, you can see that it's nesting properly and it looks just like it did on the screen. I'm gonna move to fast forward mode again so we can show you how to, uh, we'll pretend, because I think I have enough room, yep, I have enough room to do one more, uh, one more row. I could, I suppose, to make it really legitimate, I'll advance the quilt and then we'll pick up a new area and show you how easy that is to get the next one nested in. Very seamless, very easy with V3. Okay, I slacken my thread here, pull away to give myself a nice bobbin tail to pull up. And then I pull up my bobbin. There, and you can see that tie off stitch did an, another nice job. Okay, so. We're done with those two rows and say we need to advance a quilt. So let's advance the quilt and I'm going to say exit here on the tablet. So at the end of quilting, you'll notice that we have uh, some choices again, save pattern, another slash chain, uh, overlay and exit. Now the save pattern is really a nice feature. We give you two opportunities 
to save the pattern. Say you forgot, you just got so excited and you start quilting this edge to edge and oh, you made all these adjustments to it and you forgot to save it. Don't worry, we've got you covered. You can save it one more time here. You can save it. There's two opportunities to save. Now, if you blow it at this point, it's gone when you hit exit, okay? So we don't need to save it because we've already done that. We don't want to do another chain uh, or you know chain these together. We're not doing that. We want to exit. So I'm going to exit here and bye bye, away it goes. And we're back to the main splash screen. I'm going to advance the quilt. Now this might put some, some of you in a panic. Like how, how are you gonna match that up without a template? How are you going to get this thing? How is this even possible? Well, it is super duper easy. I'll get my quilt grips back on here. And this is how we do it. We go back into pattern quilting and here's where the beauty of knowing or that you can use multiple points as your boundary. So here I'm at a blank screen and I need to nest this edge to edge. So I need some reference points. And the way I do that is I go in and if you have a little laser pointer that points exactly where the needle goes, that's better. I have to, my needle doesn't go exactly through the center of the foot. It's a little off, but I think I know which way it is. So I'm going to choose points consistently. Um, so I see the same consistent part um, of the design through the, the hole in the, the uh, hole in the foot. But um, some of you may have a, a little bit more accurate way of doing that, but that's what I'm doing. I'm looking at little features and I'll zoom in here on the needle cam. You can see my lint on there too. Let me clean that off a little bit. Hey, it happens. It's what happens when you use real thread. Okay, so I'm gonna go through, and you know what, let me pull this thread out so it's a little bit clearer for everyone to see. I'm just gonna go and select points here and there that match the quilted part that I've just done. So I'm just picking out these features Because after all, when we're aligning things, we just need to know where to align it to. Now you don't have to go down your whole quilt. That would be too much work, but you need to pick up enough features to know where you're aligning it. This wouldn't make much sense, although you can do it. You could go down 10 feet of quilt. You can do that. It's not, the app isn't gonna worry that you've chosen too many points at all, but just get enough so that when you pull in the next design or that you pull in that next edge to edge that we've already saved, you can align it nicely. Okay, that's probably enough points to define the, the, the uh, the surface, the bottom surface of that design I quilted out. So now I'm just going to select points and the points really don't matter. I'm just going to select some points. And I'm not even trying to get it close to the same area at all. And I say done. So there's my boundary. You can see it on the tablet. Now looks kind of odd, like why would you ever choose a boundary like that? Let me show you. So let's go to all my designs. That's where it puts the recorded file. And I'll scroll down until I see EE tutorial. And there it is right there. And I, I need to modify that because look, it, it put it in there, but it's not the right length. It's, it's crazy. It kind of scaled it to that area that we chose. No problem, no problem whatsoever. We modify it, and you can see the scale X and scale Y is 91%. It's 91% of the original size. Well, we need to make that 100%. So how do we do that? We can tap on that and type in 100 and say OK. 
and it's now the exact file that we saved earlier. So that doesn't look aligned pretty well, does it? It looks kind of iffy. Now, so what we do is we, through the magic of just using a finger, we move that up and we can see that it aligns just like that. We can see, see that, okay, yep, it does align. Now, if I want to zoom in, I press the pan and zoom button and right now it's off. It's the magnifying glass with the plus arrow inside of it. So I'm going to turn my magnifier on and I'm going to use two fingers to expand. I'm going to zoom in and get a little bit closer look to where that design is. Now, because I have my magnifier on, any gesturing I do just moves the display. So I need to turn my magnifier off and now I can move the, the design. All right, so that would align it. That's pretty nice, just like that. But that would align it on top of something that's already there. So we don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is we can either notice our delta x value, and it's 0.03. We can use that. Remember that, 0.03. And as long as we get that lined up back in line on in the uh, horizontal manner. We can use our finger to place it the way we want it and then just type in 0.03. Or if we don't want to do that, we can just use the arrow, the down arrow, and I'm just nudging it down. I'm not using my finger uh, on the screen to gesture it down. I'm just pressing the down arrow and it's moving it down. It's just a little bit slower. So I'm moving it down, I'm moving it down, but I'm still kind of zoomed in. And I need to see the whole thing. So I'm just going to double tap the screen, double tap, 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 and it shrinks it down. And you can see that it's still, that's too tight to the previous design. That looks, but that looks pretty good. Let's see, minus 0.03. Yeah, I think I'm pretty pleased with that. So I'm going to say done and then move to start. And then I press go. And you can see that that's nested that beautifully. We've picked out the area on the quilt just fine by matching it up, looking through the eye of the foot or the hole in the foot. We've picked up our boundary nicely, all that we needed. The points really didn't matter because we, when we brought in the pattern or brought in the design, we immediately modified it and then set the scale to 100%, which was the save design, uh, save design size. And now we're quilting out. Now, because I've advanced it, I can do my next row by just using the overlay command like I did before. And there we're done. So that's it. A uh, very simple, very stress-free way of doing edge-to-edge -edge nesting. We don't need to have uh, templates made. We don't need to uh, punch uh, paper like we used to to make that template so we know where the start point would be. 
Uh, everything is very straightforward now. We don't use the fine tune function anymore. We just use the overlay and use our finger or use the arrow on the left hand uh, touchpad on the uh, screen of the Android. We just use that to do the manipulation. In fact, most of the time, unless I'm doing a percent restart where I had to rip a lot of stuff out of a quilt and get in there and really jostle things around, that is pretty much the only time you use fine tune anymore, which was the original purpose of that function. Uh, now you would just use overlay and gesture and because we have uh, an idea of where we are on the quilt because we can select any points for our boundary. We can even select points that aren't really on the boundary but things that we have to line up to. And by doing that, we don't need fine tune anymore. Um, except in those extreme emergency uh, where we have an emergency that we want to, to uh, use it. So enjoy the edge-to-edge -edge designs and use that using this feature of being able to cho choose multiple points in your boundary. And until next time, happy quilting!